الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ومن لم يجعل الله له نورا فما له من نور وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أكرمنا بخير كتاب أنزل وخصنا بخير نبي أرسل وجعلنا بالإسلام خير أمة أخرجت للناس نأمر بالمعروف وننهى عن المنكر ونؤمن بالله وأشهد أن سيدنا وإمامنا وأسوتنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح للأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده وتركنا على محجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي الكريم ذي الخلق العظيم وعلى آله وصحبه الذين آمنوا به وعزروه ونصروه واتبعوا النور الذي أنزل معه أولئك هم المفلحون ورضي الله عن من دعا بدعوته واهتدى بسنته وجاهد جهاده إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد We begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. We thank Allah azza wa jal, God Almighty, for allowing us to gather here on this blessed day of Jumu'ah in His house. We beseech Him, tabaraka wa ta'ala, to send His peace, mercy, and blessings upon the last and final messenger sent to humanity, the seal of all the prophets, the mercy to the world, Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, companions, and all of those who follow Him until the end of time. Among the many attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and my sisters, is a very unique one that a lot of us don't know much about, which is Allah azza wa jal laughs. Inna Allah yadhaq. Allah azza wa jal surely laughs. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs and smiles, this means that He is very pleased with His servant, with His slave. How He laughs, the details, the mechanics, we do not know the details. لا نعرف التفاصيل كيف يضحك الله. However, we know Allah subhanahu wa taala laughs. Our scholars teach us that there are a couple of different situations in which Allah azza wa jalla laughs at His servant, at His slave. So in this brief khutbah today, inshallah, I will share with you six different situations where Allah laughs at His slave, His servant. I want you all to take mental notes as we don't have much time and the topic is very beneficial and it's a very beautiful topic which we will all be ibnillah benefit from. The first situation and now this is not in order of preference, this is just six states in which Allah Azza wa Jal laughs. It's not in order of any virtue or preference, just remember these six bi ibnillah. The first one is two people that had a conflict with each other. So let's say you and someone else had an argument. So these two people got into an argument and it escalated and it got even worse and worse and worse and things became very violent. To the point where one of them murdered the other person. So the other person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted as a martyr, as a shaheed. As for the murderer, what is going to be his state? Later on in his life, this man made tawbah. He repented. He made tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much so that he gave up his life in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He became a shaheed himself. In the akhirah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will unite these two people in the gates of paradise and he will unite them as brothers and he will enter them into al-jannah and he will laugh at them subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me give you an example. We know the sahabi Ikrima ibn Abi Jahl. Abu Jahl was the arch enemy of Islam, one of the greatest Islamophobes that ever lived on the face of this planet, who wanted to destroy the mission of Islam and the Prophet Never became Muslim, never embraced the faith. However, his own son, much later after Fath Makkah, he came to the Messenger وسلم, after his wife convinced the Prophet to give him protection. He came and he became Muslim at the hands of Rasulullah now this is the son of one of the worst enemies of Islam, Abu Jahl. 
Ikrimah fought against Muslims, killed so many Muslims. However, he pledged that now he will work even harder for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After the demise of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, many battles took place. A battle that took place under the leadership of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu was the, the battle against the Romans, the Byzantines. 400 Sahaba they fought in this battle. Ikrimah was one of them. However, before he went to battle, before he responded to the call, Khalid said, Ikrimah, I don't want you to come. Because if we lose you, it's going to be a big loss for the Ummah. Ikrimah said, no, I want to go. When he went, at the last moments of his life in this world, after this battle concluded, there were three Sahaba that were lying down on the ground, about to die. Al-Harith, Ayyash and Ikrimah radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Harith asked for water, he needed water. So one of the Sahabi went and gave him water. However, he saw Ayyash next to him. He said, give it to Ayyash. And then they saw Ikrimah. And then when the water went to Ikrimah, Ikrimah saw Harith still struggling. So he passed the water on to Harith. When the water was taken to Harith, Harith had passed away. Then the water was taken to Ayash, Ayash had passed away. And then water was taken to Ikrimah, Ikrimah passed away. Look at the love they had for one another. Look at the service that they did for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How they made tawbah. Take for example, Wahshi, the one who murdered Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu. However, when he became Muslim, he killed one of the greatest enemies of Islam, who was Musaylama al kadhab the false prophet. So these two people will be united at the gates of paradise and they will be entered as brothers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will laugh at them. The second state in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs is al ithar preference. When you prefer something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you give it up to your brother or sister, you want it so much, you love it so much, however you see the other person is in need of it or would like it as well, you give it up fi sabilillah. They needed water so badly. If this water went inside their throat, perhaps they would have lived. However, they saw their brother was in need of it, so they gave it up. When was the last time me and you, we gave something that was so dear to us, so precious and beloved and valuable to us that someone else wanted, we gave it up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A hungry companion came to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and he said, Ya Rasulullah, do you have any food? I'm very hungry. Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he said, I don't have anything in my house except water. Can you believe this? Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, responsible leader of nine different families, nine different households, the greatest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation has no food in his house except water? MashaAllah, we open our refrigerator, we don't have space in our refrigerator. We have extra deep freeze that we keep, extra you know, food and items stocked up. So much food, so much blessings we have. Messenger وسلم, could have chose to live luxuriously, yet he decided to live in this world like a traveler. So he went to the community and he said, who would like to host my guest? So Sahaba were people who would love to take advantage of thawab and reward. They would love to host people. So one Ansari man got up, companion, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I would like to host this guest of yours. So he goes towards his house and he tells his wife, that we have Rasulullah's guest with us today. So the wife was very embarrassed and shy. She said, we have only enough food for the children. We don't have enough food for the guest. So he told his wife, keep them busy, keep them distracted. I'm bringing Messenger Sallallahu guest inside the house. So the food was brought, but it was just enough for one adult person. But he still brought the food to his guest. He dimmed the light so that his guest doesn't feel uncomfortable. One of the adab, the etiquette of treating guests, if it's possible for you to serve the food, for you to host them. We're so busy, we don't have time to invite guests to our house. We're so busy, we don't have time to, you know, be hosts and be generous with people. So look, the adab is also to eat with the, with the, with the guest. Don't just say, okay, here's the food and you go to the other room. No, you have to eat and sit with the guest if it's possible. So he dimmed the lights to make him feel comfortable. The next morning, Fajr Salah, the Prophet ﷺ called this Sahabi and he said, come here so and so. What you and your wife did last night to the guest, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was so pleased and happy at you that he laughed subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
My brothers and my sisters, Al-Ithar, when you give something up, even though this food was so precious and special and important for, for his family, yet he gave it up to someone who was in need. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that none of you will attain true goodness and bir until you spend and give up that which is most beloved to you. The third state in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs, my brothers and my sisters, is a person who has a very beautiful, luxurious bed. Comfortable bed. MashaAllah, in the winter, it's really comfortable to sleep. We have nice blanket and sheets, heating system, no problem. However, this person has his spouse. He has a very comfortable bed. Yet this person decides to wake up in the middle of the night. This person wakes up a little bit before Fajr in the dead of night and he or she offers two rak'ahs. <coughs> this is so beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he azza wa jal laughs. You know, when you go to Masjid al-Aqsa, if you pray there, one salah equivalent in Masjid al-Aqsa is equivalent to 500 salah anywhere else in the world. <coughs> Masjid al-Nabawi in Medina al-Munawwara, if you offer one salah there, it is equivalent to 1,000 salah anywhere else. Masjid al-Haram in Mecca al-Mukarramah, if you offer one salah, it is equivalent to 100,000 salah anywhere else. The ulama, they say, what is more virtuous and greater if you combine all of those is when you offer two raka'at tahajjud salah in the middle of the night, subhanAllah. I spend so much money for umrah and hajj, you're telling me I can get more reward in... Habibi, we are not saying that. We are saying that there is more juhd, there is more struggle. It sounds like perhaps it's easy, but try doing it. How many of us can really get up, including myself? SubhanAllah. Allah Azza wa Jal knows it's difficult to leave your cozy, comfortable bed. He knows it's not easy waking up 4 or 5 o'clock, you know, early in the morning, after a long day at work, and you are tired, and the night is long, and you can sleep and relax. However, you give it up for the sake of Allah, and you stand, you make wudu in the cold. This is so beloved. Allah loves this so much. This is why He laughs at His servant. He says in the Quran Those who forsake their beds and stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and call him khawfan wa tama'a They fear Allah and they have hope in Him And they spend from that which Allah provides them May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with us and may he laugh with us. Allah Azza wa Jal, Allahumma dhuhib lana ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu minnahu wa lakuhu. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidi al-Mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Another situation in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs is when his servant is steadfast. Thabat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا Indeed, those who say, My Rabb is Allah, my Lord and caretaker is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا And after that, they remain firm on this statement. They remain firm on this, on this belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my Lord and He will take care of me and I will obey Him and worship Him the way He deserves to be worshipped. What does Allah do to these people? Allah sends down malaika and angels upon these people and He, he gives them good news. And he says, there is no worry, no sadness, no anxiety for you. This is what you deserve. With all of this hatred that's going on against Muslims and Islam in this country and across the globe. Imam Siraj said from this very minbar last week, that you should not be afraid of anyone. You should be afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ Don't fear them, fear me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. 
Don't fear politicians, don't fear the government, don't fear the media, don't fear anybody except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because my life and your life is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can harm us in any way, shape or form. All we have to do is believe in Allah and remain firm upon this al-istiqamah. We have to be firm, my brothers and my sisters. The reason why Muslims are suffering across the world and here at home is because we are not true to the values of Islam. We are not being sincere and devout Muslims. We are forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst the worldly uh, distractions around us. We fear the wrong things. We are distracted by the things that are, you know, inviting us to the fire. My brothers and my sisters, let us come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remain firm and have this istiqamah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will laugh upon us. The other situation in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs, number five, is when his or her servant is obedient during difficult times. When the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that when she leaves the house wearing hijab, she might be subject to ridicule, mockery, or even physical abuse. When the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes out time and he offers salah in public, he knows that perhaps he's going to get stares and he's going to get funny looks and maybe even some attacks. When the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to sell haram, however he or she refrains from that, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obeys Allah during difficult times. When my young brother or sister, when they are invited towards to go to the club or the pub or to hang out and do drugs or substance abuse, they refrain for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they obey Allah azza wa jal. When it's snowing and you know that you know it's difficult, you might, and you still make an effort to do the right thing, to come to the masjid, when you go to work and you know you are being invited to engage in, in haram activities, yet you refrain from this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you obey Allah azza wa jal, in times that are difficult, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs. Let me give you an example, a simple example all of us here can take away, inshaAllah. There is a dua, the Prophet said, if you recite this dua, you will get one million hasanat, good deeds, rewards, and one million guna, sins, mistakes will be taken off. Say yes. What is this dua we are all thinking about? All of us heard of this dua perhaps at least once, and most of us know at least 90% of this dua. What is this dua? This is the dua of the marketplace. When you go shopping, the dua for the bazaar. What is this? La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu yuhyi wa yumitu wa huwa hayyu la yamut bi yadihi al-khayr wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. If you are going grocery shopping or if you are in the mall shopping for clothes or electronics or anything else, if you stop for a moment and say this dua, Allah will give you one million hasanat good deeds. Why is that? Did you ever wonder why one million hasanat when I'm shopping? Why not one million hasanat when I'm in the masjid? The reason why when we are in the masjid, we are here for the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know, we come with this mindset, right? We are motivated, we know. You're listening to the khutbah, you're praying, you're making dua, istighfar, you're reading Quran. You're here in the environment. However, when you are outside, when you are on hillside, and when you are being distracted with all of these things, when you go shopping, and you take a second to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the world around you and all of this hectic you know, environment, this means a lot to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why he laughs at this person, subhanAllah. Look at my servant. He's being surrounded by all of these things in the dunya. However, he stops and he or she remembers me. I love this servant of mine and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs. For this reason, Sahaba like Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they used to go to the souq, to the marketplace. Why? Not for shopping, just so that they can read this dua and get one million hasanat, subhanAllah. So next time you go shopping, my brother or my sister, and you go with your family, your wife, remind them. Say this dua yourself, inshaAllah. You can go to Google and just write dua for the supermarket, dua for marketplace, you will find it right there. Learn the dua, memorize it, implement it, inshaAllah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be laughing at you. Now I just want to comment one more thing because, again, we see a lot of bigotry and hatred against Muslims in Islam. And, for, and, and we find a lot of people taking a step back 
and, 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 and thinking if they should uh, expose themselves as Muslims, if they should reveal the fact that they are Muslims. So you find uh, some sisters, they are questioning if, should, if, should, if they should wear hijab out in public because they fear for their life. We find brothers, maybe they have beard, so should we trim the beard a little bit or shave it off because of, you know, perhaps any uh, attack or any kind of harm upon us. You find many, many, uh, you know, issues in the Muslim community. However, this is the time, my brothers and my sisters, more than any other time, because this is the time of ibtila. This is a time for that we are going through test by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this time, we have to be mutafarrid bi ta'a, as they say. We have to be even firm and more strict and, 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 and devout devoutly connected to our deen, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the time. Don't wait for something bad to happen. Do it right now, my brothers and my sisters. Offer the salah on time. Come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Recite the Quran. Serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your own capacity. Remember, the way we can influence and impact and show a positive message of Islam and Muslims out there in public is by being good Muslims, by being good citizens, by participating and benefiting our communities. And like this, we will be able to shape the public mindset and perception of Muslims. And the last, and not the least, absolutely, person who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who makes wudu at home. Now this person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves so much and he laughs at this person. And inshallah, this is all of us today, bi'idhnillah ta'ala. A person who makes wudu, and he or she walks to the masjid, to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, if you come to the masjid, each step you take, you get one hasana, Another step you take, one sayyi'a marked off. You come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to speak to Allah, to talk to Him, to develop a good relationship to Him, with Him, and you offer the salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that so much, He laughs at His servant, subhanAllah. When you come to the masjid, my brothers and my sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aina jiranullah, where are my neighbors? So the malaika, the angel says, Man yujawirka, who could possibly be your neighbors, ya Allah? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ahlul Masajid, the people of the Masajid, the people who go to the mosques, the people who frequent the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brother and my sister, if you can, my brothers especially, try to come to the masjid at least once a day. If you cannot come for every salah, at least try to come once a day and bring your son with you. Introduce them, attach them to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Salatul Jama'a afdal min salat al fadhi bi sab'a wa ishreen daraja aw kama qala alayhi salatu salam. Offering salat in jama'a in the masjid in congregation is 27 degrees times more than praying alone by yourself in your house or in your office or anywhere else. SubhanAllah. Now it's not 27 times more. The Prophet did not say sab'a wa ishreen maratan. It's not times more. He said daraja. Daraja is a whole nother level. Each daraja in Jannah is huge. It's, it's bigger than this whole entire universe. So each daraja, 27 times daraja you get for coming to the house of Allah and offering your salah in Jama'ah. You know, I always say this. With our, we are first, second generation Muslims here right now. The immigrant community is rather new here in this country. You find the young people still not present the, the way sh that they should be. What makes you think after 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, the young people will be coming to the masjid? With all of our scholars and our leaders and our elders, they are here. Yet, you don't find that many young people coming to the masjid regularly. What makes you think 10, 15, 20 years from now, your child and your grandchildren will be coming to the masjid? We ask Allah to protect us and always keep us attached to the masjid. But seriously, we have to ask this question to us. This is why I love Jamaica Muslim Center and I always try to attend the activities here and support them in any way possible, that they are doing a lot of great work for the next generation. Now we hear this all the time, but if we don't start working right now more seriously, all of us here have a responsibility to play. This is not the time anymore to sit back and just watch the show. Because if that's the case, we will have people like Donald Trump, Donald Trump leading the country. May Allah protect us all. So with that being said, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the people who He is pleased with and who He laughs at. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may He enter us into al-jannah and firdaus al-a'la of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all of those who, ha who He has been pleased with. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdibina wa ja'alna sababan liman ihdada. Allahumma alina al-haqqa haqqa wa nuzukna al-tiba'a wa alina al-baatila baatila wa nuzukna al-tiba'a. Allahumma habibi lana iman wa zayyinu fi qulubina wa kawrihi lana 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 wa k
الصيام واجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اشفنا واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحمنا وارحم اموات المسلمين اللهم اصلح شباب المسلمين واصلح نساء المسلمين يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة